from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE here at HPE Discover, it's the SiliconANGLE's flagship program, theCUBE, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm here with my co-host Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com Research, and we are here with Paul Miller, Vice President of Marketing at Converge Data Center Infrastructure at HP Enterprise, and Patrick Moorhead, Principal Analyst at Moore uh, Insights and Strategies, uh, always on TV talking about the, the Converge and HP and competition. Great to have you guys on theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Today, Thanks for so having day us. one's on, in the books. So we see the news, all the messaging out there, the new logo, the new branding, big news on obviously the Microsoft Cloud partnership ecosystem play, and that move getting out of the public cloud. And on the product technology side, I'll see synergy, composable, a lot of DevOps, a lot of technology kind of mm -hmm. coming together. Kind of a teaser of the Memster, the machine synergy <laughs> coming together, as well as the existing stuff. So um, that's out now. A lot of good press coming out of it. Um, Feedback from you guys, customers? Are they like, you know, standing ovation, golf clap, or you know, <laughs> what's what's the what's the what's the feedback? No, the feedback has been phenomenal. The uh, booth area has been just jam packed with customers because they want to hear the story. They want to understand how they can actually, you know, deliver at cloud speed. How they can actually work and take their traditional apps, their new cloud apps, their DevOps environments on one platform and marry them all together and really get that acceleration and simplicity to the business. You know, we've all been working on yeah. you know, areas of converged systems, hyper-converged systems, yeah. and what they really needed to do was to take it to the next plateau, and that's what really Synergy does. There's been a little bit of skepticism, is it real? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then when we come down and show them the demos yeah. across the board in, in the center here, how you compose clouds, containers, et cetera, they're really seeing that this is real. Patrick, I want to ask you as an analyst, you cover the, to the marketplace, so you know, HP obviously with Converged, you know, right out of the box, good leadership on that, they've had good product leadership. Yeah. But some are saying, you know, maybe a little bit late to the game, not, may not understanding, squinting through some of the details of, of Synergy, ah, you know, Nutanix has been out there, other vendors. Right. What is it all about from your perspective? It's not about the Nutanix or the virtualization and the, and the combined, it's really an extension of kind of a new architecture as they're saying. What's yeah. your take on it? I mean, I mean, is HP a fast follower here? Are they breaking new ground? Will they continue in the, in the innovation on top of Converge? What's your take? Yeah, so first and foremost, uh, it really helps to understand why customers are actually wanting to do this. And whether it's simplicity in terms of even deploying apps or going all the way to composability, uh, people are on a different journey and a different level. But, but what they're trying to do is get technology out of the way to be able to serve the business. Uh, I do think that, that HP has been early with a lot of different things, uh, whether it's uh, things like the machine, whether it's uh, things like Moonshot, hyper-converged. Yeah. I actually uh, thought initially that HP may have been a little bit behind the boat, but when I fully looked at the comprehensiveness, server storage networking, uh, DevOps, virtualization, and hybrid cloud, I'm thinking that at least right now, they're very, very, the most, they're mo the most comprehensive composable yeah. solution out there. And the Converge, you know, was a good call. I mean, look at, well, look at this mainstream now. People don't even blink at that anymore. It's kind of like, yeah. it's not a, 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 a sideline conversation, it's front and center. Now with this, this new opportunity, the management piece seems to be the battleground. We were talking about that in our opening today. Yeah. Paul, what's your take, and then talk about, Patrick, the, the market realities of management. Yeah. You can't have, this, that, you can't have one of the three pieces of the pie. You need to have APIs, you need to have elastic pools. What's, what's the deal here? I mean, share with us. Yeah, so you know, we've, been, we've been actually laying tracks for composability over the last three years. And with the launch of OneView, we started to lay the tracks of how you can manage servers and storage and fabric together. And then also bring out the API, which we announced at Discover last year, is this open API that you know, people like Chef, Doc, or Puppet can integrate with, as well as traditional vendors. In addition to that, hardware vendors like Arista can plug into this management plane so it becomes an open architecture for people in the data center. So we began to lay that foundation, and that is in our current yeah. converged systems, as well as the underpinnings of our composable. So yeah, it's all about getting that management plane, and then that simple, 
API, not layers of APIs and management that customers as well as vendors and, and partners can tie into in a simple way. How, how should we, Paul, look at the portfolio now that you've announced Synergy? Where does it fit? How do you describe you know, your offerings to customers? So when you think about the, the, uh, the, the migration and transition, right? we don't believe that everyone's going to jump on composable day one. Right, there's still a big consumption model for uh, the delivery models of converged, as well as hyper-converged. So we believe that it's going to be a couple year transition as people move off of, hey, I get converged and the value of converged, and then I start to look at the tools of composable and understand what they are, et cetera. So, you know, just yesterday also, in, in addition to Synergy, we announced our hyper-converged platform with Azure. So for some customer use cases like Robo, where Composable is probably a little bit too big. You just want a hyper-converged you know, Azure gateway to run your apps and then maybe do backup to the Azure cloud. So it all depends on where a customer is in the maturity models. So Patrick, what are you guys seeing? Um, on the one hand, we talk about simplicity, bringing the parts together, you know, eliminate all that heavy lifting. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of people still want choice. And right. You got the broad portfolio for that. Are those two factors, simplicity and choice, counterpoised? Are they complimentary? Can they be complimentary? What's your take on all that? Well, as in life, there are no free lunches <laughs> out there, okay? To get something, you have to give up something. And in a way, if you're writing to a specific API, in a way, that could be construed as a lock-in, okay? Now, uh, the benefits, though, could greatly outweigh. I mean, if, if we were looking for simplicity, uh, in the hardware, we'd all be doing rack and stack, and then we can have hundreds of hard, uh, hundreds of management people and deployment people out there to add to our opex. So I, I really think it comes down to this capex versus opex, with an overriding theme of what can I actually do differently in my business? Uh, how many applications could I uh, deploy in in this scenario? How much flexibility do I have in this scenario? you have to put in your ROI a, a benefit to having all of this flexibility and automation. Otherwise, it's never going to make sense. And in a way, what we're finding is the, the, the most future forward type of CIOs, it almost becomes a religious discussion. Because it's hard to take a spreadsheet approach to this. You have to you either believe in this or, or you don't. And you go from there. But, but so, but you're painting that sort of black and white scenario, but then there's sort of this halfway house, yeah. particularly when the channel gets involved, right? So, halfway house. So <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's uh, my we, line. We said that to Pat Gelsinger, who <laughs> didn't like that, did he? But so. No, it's a you, way station. When you, when you think about the channel in particular, take, take for instance, what EMC did with vSpecs. It was a way to sort yeah. of placate the channels. Hey, I want Dell servers this week instead yeah. of you know, Cisco UCS or whatever it is. How do you, Paul, approach the channel? Is it, look, you got to be all in on HP, I mean, or you guys are all about choice. Um, are you looking for channel partners that are going to oh. sort of drink the HP Kool-Aid and drive that because you're going to drive value? Or how do you accommodate those guys that want that greater flexibility so and maybe not as much value? Yeah. So the good thing about Synergy is it provides great value if you're going to hook up to third-party storage as well because you still can get some of the automation. There's nothing preventing third-party storage from writing to the API, just like Arista did on the, on the network switch. Open. Yeah. So there's nothing preventing that. Where we see channel partners really excited about Synergy is now they can go have a different conversation with the customer. Because Synergy allows them to build workload-specific templates, they can go build a template specific to a customer and then offer that as value add. Yeah. In addition to the template, the boot volume. So they can now offer greater levels of service in, in a nature that's in their wheelhouse, right? Some of the cloud stuff is yeah, not yeah. always in people's wheelhouse, but standing up infrastructure and infrastructure-based templates, that's core to their it's wheelhouse. It's a foundation for wrapping more services around, more, more profit for them. I mean, for a channel partner, it's a home run because yeah. now I have some standardization, if you will, and a reference architecture to wrap services around. Sure, it, but, exactly. but most channel partners are still selling tin, but, so, but I love the message because it's a higher gross profit. They, they, all, service. they all have to transition. I mean, I'm yeah. sure you're seeing this too. It's a more of a you know, mini SI, if, if you will, yeah, right, up the and stack. Not, and that's really the message that you're sending to the exactly, channel. Exactly, and it's not too far of a stretch, right? This is, this is core 
to what they do already, and it helps simplify them. They all have to stand up and load the image, load the boot, do all that stuff. We can give them an automated way of capturing an image, storing it, and then reusing it with a customer over and over again, or reusing it with other customers. That's huge value to them. And again, it, it plays to their what they understand and how they understand how they sell. Patrick, let's talk about the customer conversation, because at the end of the day, composability, DevOps, all it is is about getting to that final destination, whether it's a halfway house, way station, right. there's a lot of engineering involved in hybrid cloud. We, we know public cloud is out there, HP's announced they're getting out of that, but it's still building private clouds, so you have on-prem and public, and everything in between is essentially hybrid or an engineering yeah. opportunity for the customer, and every company has its own little version of what that is, and that's kind of what we, you know, we, we see in the market. That's really the conversation here, right? Isn't it really about getting to hybrid and figuring out how to yeah. leverage? I mean, this whole synergy thing is about making it easier to build hybrid cloud, isn't it? Yeah, the, the conversations that, that, that we're having, and I, I just met with some of the largest financials in New York City a few weeks ago, is the reality is they might have 5,000 different applications, okay, that they've created over the last 30 years in some languages that they, they don't even have the skill set to update. And so what you're doing is they're prioritizing which ones should be turned over. All of the new ones are, are going to be cloud-based, okay, unless it's tied into a proprietary uh, type of mainframe. And uh, the ultimate goal is to get to a self-service model more of a cloud model. I think the struggle that they're trying to figure out right now is, what kind of platform should that be? Should this be a, a classic rack and stack and then I'll throw a ton of resources at it, like the hyperscale guys? Yeah. Now, maybe the top thousand might even consider something like that. But for everybody else, I, I think that this whole uh, composability conversation is, is being accepted it's being discussed, and I think they're just trying to figure it out at this point. So let me just kind of play devil's advocate. I'm a customer, CXO or CIO. Here's my reaction. Whoa, single architecture? I would not like that, don't jam that down my throat. So it's kind of, there might be a reaction where it's like when they hear single architecture in a world where agile and versatility yeah. is the norm. Right. There's a nuance here, I mean, single architecture it's foundational. I want you guys to, to, to break that out and explain that because I think that is, I'm seeing some confusion right. on what that is. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? So, so to clarify that, guys. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of other context. While they're hearing, while they're saying, oh, single architecture, you know, that maybe all HP, again, we're going to support other people's devices, the bigger pressure on them is from the lines of business saying, I need more applications faster. I need you to respond at cloud speed but they want to keep control of many of those applications for the reasons that Patrick talked about. But this is so not, prior, but it's not pro pro proprietary, it's, not, it's an HP architecture, but it's not an HP lock-in. It's not yeah. an HP lock-in. Again, Explain we that. will support third-party devices. Docker, Pardon? Kubernetes. Docker. Yeah, and, and it's the management plane that is actually where they want more flexibility. They want flexibility to have whatever hypervisor they want, whatever DevOps tools they want, because that's what's going to speed their ability to deliver these applications that the lines of business are demanding. So you're saying you could pretty much choose any piece part you want, but you're going to be giving up the value of that integration. Yes. So, so to picking up on John's point, that single architecture, there's the other dimension here is the sort of horizontal platform to build applications yeah. on top of, which is really the, yeah. your play, and then you got sort of a red stack Oracle play as like all Oracle all the time. H how do you compete with that? How do you, I mean, I think I just laid it out, but I'd love to hear it in your <laughs> words as, as to, you know, what you're seeing in the marketplace, or you have solutions specific to, let's say, SAP or Oracle, or you know, virtualization solutions. What if you could talk about yeah, that Yeah, so what you'll bit. see us do is our converged systems where we've built these workload-specific solutions that are really, you know, the, the converged was all about a workload-optimized solution. Yeah. It was pretty static. What you'll yeah. see us do is take that and templatize it and build images around it so that customers, instead of saying, I want to buy this specific converged system, yeah. they'll go to our website or an SAP website or like they can to Docker, uh, GitHub, download the integration, download the template onto the converged system and be ready to go. So it takes out this whole weird procurement thing that convergence was all about. Half of convergence was about a procurement model, making it more efficient by building it in a factory and then shipping it to a customer. Yeah. Now also you can have a compute and storage pool that you go to a website 
and download a template and image, you've solved a lot so of it's, problems. It's, but it sounds similar to what IBM tried to do three years ago with so-called patterns, and then they've seemed to, they've really <laughs> struggled with it, and have kind of pulled back, got out of the you know, hardware piece of that, and they've still got some vertical solutions like Oracle, but why do you think you know, I, IBM's example you know, was struggled, and, and what gives you confidence that you won't sort of repeat some of those challenges? Because they approached it just at the cloud automation layer and the application automation layer, and didn't address and simplify the infrastructure. The infrastructure is still difficult to set up, and so they solved a part of the problem, which we solved with our, our cloud system automation yeah. layer, but now we've taken it deeper and solve it at the infrastructure layer. So think about, we're giving customers two catalogs, one for their applications with CSA, and a second for their infrastructure, and we glue those together. That's where you get this extreme speed and efficiency. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Uh, Patrick, I'll give you the final word on the segment. Um, what are you explaining to your customers about this announcement, and where does this point to for HP in the future? Where is this leading? What's your advice to your clients, yeah. and where's this point to? Yeah, so my recommendation is, is find somebody who supports different operating models, all the way from uh, rack and stack to converged, hyper-converged, and ultimately to, to composable, because you're going to be on a different journey even inside of an a type of application or a department. Find somebody who can support all three. You don't have to have a full marriage with all of them. <laughs> you can actually partially be wedded to three different environments here. And, and, and find that, and I, I, I'm actually really excited, more excited about Synergy today than maybe I was a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited in that, it, that I feel like it's real, where it's not just talk. Yeah. So I do think this is a big day, a big opportunity for HP yeah. out there, but HP needs to be patient with this, because yeah. uh, like a lot of people have seen, this doesn't happen overnight. Customers aren't rolling their infrastructure over to cloud native, but this is a road to cloud native. Yeah. It's a great opportunity. Congratulations, Paul, appreciate it. Thank it's theCUBE, bringing you the converged points of view here <laughs> with Dave Vellante, Patrick Moorhead, two industry analysts uh, in, in convergent infrastructure. This is theCUBE, of course, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. We'll be back after this short break.